Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. This is a sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. Happy Thursday, everybody. And we have to give a shout out to our girl, Tori Shulman. Today's her birthday. She yes. can't be here with us. I'm sure tons of FOMO out there, but we love you, girl. Get well. <laughs> Happy birthday. There you go. Let's get right to it, guys. Gwen Stefani is being called out for cultural appropriation. In a recent interview with Allure magazine, Gwen defended her 2004 album, Love Angel Music Baby, that was inspired by Japan's trending Harajuku district to the point that she even said that she was Japanese. Hmm. At the time, Gwen featured Japanese girls in her music video and launched a Japanese-inspired product line. The interviewer, who was Filipino-American, wrote that she was uncomfortable with Gwen's statements, but Gwen said it doesn't feel right to criticize someone for being a fan of something and wanting to share it. We got to break this down a little bit because right. I see two sides of this. I think appreciating a culture and wanting to spread the love of that culture, I think that's perfectly fine. I did that kind of in my travels. I picked up something from everywhere I went, but not to the point where I'm like, well, I'm Cambodian now. Right. right. That, that's where I think I have a problem a, with it. Yeah. Erica, what do you think about this? Um, yeah, I think that's the, that's the bigger issue because anytime, well, here actually, I'm, I, actually, I think this is what the bigger issue is. Do you is. agree with what I said or no? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. I, I do agree. Okay. I do agree. Um, I think that cult, uh, cultural appreciation is a beautiful thing. We see it displayed in a lot of different respectful ways. Appropriation is something different because you're dipping in and out. It's almost like uh, they want our rhythm, but they don't want our blues. Mm -hmm. um, and that's problematic. However, I think the bigger issue is that it's clear that some people aren't necessarily doing their own social media. Um, <laughs> they're living in a bubble uh, because I think that if people were a little bit more present as to the temperature and climate of our society at this point and how we're trying to do better, then things like this wouldn't happen. Now, do I think that this is egregious and we should be calling for Gwen Stefani to be canceled? <laughs> I, I, I'm saying no, but I'm also not a Japanese person. Maybe other people feel differently. But I do think that it's inter uh, that we need to get more in touch with what's happening in this climate. Yeah, I could see that. I, you know, Steph, I, I think about this and it, you know, I keep going back and forth. I keep, this is weird. I keep thinking about the rapper Paul Wall. Okay. I do. He's All a, right. He's a, a, a white rapper from Houston, but he's from Houston for real. He, he really was one of the pioneers of the go grill, grill business, one of the best rappers alive, in my opinion. And I always think about him if he is uh, deeply immersed and immersed in black culture. I don't think he'd ever say that I'm a black man, but if he says, I rep, I rep this hood and I have forever, I don't see that being wrong. I don't see him saying I identify with black culture over any other culture mm -hmm. because that is the culture that he is known and he has grown up with and amongst. So I go back and forth with if you are raised in a culture, even though you are not t technically f from of that, the, culture, of that right. culture, if you are that, if that is every ounce of you, I don't see a problem with that. I, I see a problem if you go to Houston for a summer. Yes. And you come back with a gold grill and you have a different way of speaking. And now all of a sudden this is your culture. That's where I think you have a problem. But I think when you just when you come up and something is you, I think having a pride in what raised you and who you are and how you you have an outlook on the world. I don't see a problem with that. I see I don't see anything really wrong with what Gwen did. I think she said it ha uh, ham fistedly. I don't think she meant any harm. I don't think I just, so either. I just think that it's, it's a person that thinks this culture is really cool, but I don't think she's really invested in what made it what it is, yeah, which Steph, is you, problematic. You could drop that fake British accent. Yeah, oh, no, Steph, I get told that all the time. <laughs> They, like, so she also says she feels British too. I don't take offense to that. I don't take offense when we see like so many celebrities do it. American celebrities, they talk in British accents. I mentioned literally Nicki Minaj yesterday doing it all the time. <laughs> and I mean, it is what it is. I don't take offense. But Gwen Stefani, this isn't the first time she's done things like this with different cultures. So she used to wear bindis a lot and that caused, ruffled some feathers. She wore her hair in Bantu knots. That obviously upset people. Um, I think she's someone who's very well traveled. She did go to Japan a lot as a young girl. I can see, especially in the Harajuku world, it is so intoxicating. It's such a fashion statement. It is really beautiful. And I can see how she's put that into her music and vibe. But I do think it's a little strange that she says she feels like she is now Japanese. Yeah, she is Japanese. Yeah. That's, where I That's where it's like, ooh. 
Exactly. Ooh. Exactly. All right, let's move on to this story. A list actor, which none of us know who this is, was recently spotted on the set of a new HBO series. But can you guess who it is? He's shooting a new TV series, The Sympathizer. Look, he's wearing a red wig and a receding hairline. Take a good look. I don't. I, I have a guess. Do, okay. We'll fire it out. I'm going to fire it out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that's uh, Mr. David Spade. David In makeup. Spade. It looks I'm just listen at the build. It, it looks like the late James Conn to me. That Obviously, yeah, it, it is not James Conn, or I don't know. But would, any other guesses? I have no idea. I mean, I've seen Jared Leto transform into some pretty unrecognizable characters. Ooh, that's a good out of the box. He, guess. He's really like can transform into a different person. All right, let's. Are we sure it's a he? I think this is a trick. Oh, all right. Well, let's see. Let's see. Believe it or not. It's Robert Downey no, Jr. I would have never oh my that. The actor reportedly shaved his head to accommodate the wig. Obviously, that's the receding hairline. Here's another look at him in character and in real life. Wow. Is he playing James Conn? <laughs> he still looks like James Conn. <laughs> he does look like. What a transformation, though, huh? That's that I would have never. The yeah. Power of you weren't ever going to get me amazing. there. Wow. No. Amazing. Do we know what he's playing? No. James Conn. It's a <laughs> hey, no. It does look like a James Conn. It does look like a James Conn. Are we done with that story? I, I guess think so. that's it. <laughs> 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 the, All right. The mystery's All right. been solved. We got to turn it down a little bit because before we go, we're going to have some sad news here. Guitarist Jeff Beck passed away suddenly at the age of 78. His publicist confirmed Jeff died on Wednesday after contracting bacterial meningitis. Jeff was considered one of the greatest guitarists of all time. He gained some fame as a member of the British group The Yardbirds in 1965. This is cool. He replaced Eric Clapton. I didn't know that. He collaborated with everyone from Rod Stewart to Cindy Lauper and was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame twice. Wow. He recently wow. wrapped up a tour with Johnny Depp to promote their album 18. Johnny was reportedly at Jeff's bedside when he passed away and is devastated by his death. I didn't know it was possible. First of all, what a great career. Yeah. Second of all, I didn't know it was possible to get inducted to the Hall of Fame twice. Yeah, that means you're real good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that made, yeah, they want to let the world know. But it's so weird when they showed the Yardbirds there. Uh, I told you guys I got a record player uh, during COVID. The Yardbirds was one of the first albums I got. So really? I didn't even realize that that was him. Yeah, so I'm just hearing now that he was solo and also with the band. So that's yeah, I, was say, I thought he could have possibly done it with two different bands. Yeah, I didn't know you could do that. But what a career and what a way to go out. If, John, yes. Johnny Depp's right there. See, but yeah, see Johnny on the other side. We're just on tour. You know, you, you best guitar player ever. That's a heck of a yeah, life. Yeah, we always make light. You know, it's sad when people pass away. You try to make a little light of it. But when you have a great career like that, we kind of always say the same thing. Yeah. That's the goal. And people you love at your bedside, that's the way that's to do it, up. in my mind. Coming up on DBL, our interview with Rosie Perez. She's telling us all about her iconic roles over the years. And we've got a first look at a new documentary about Pamela Anderson's life. There it is. Coming up next. It's a new year and DBL is all the talk. <laughs> Let's get it going. We had a lot to talk about last year. I'm flexing every day. And we're not stopping in 2023. <laughs> I'll see you guys on the flip side. <laughs> So Jeff literally just found out what Robert Downey Jr. is doing or what he's dressed up as. Jeff? So it's, a, it's supposedly a spy thriller. He's not dressed as anyone like James Conn. He's not playing James Conn. <laughs> he did look just like him. him. He did look a lot like James Conn, but he's not playing anyone in particular that you would know. That's just the look of his character. So it's a spy thriller. I thought it was kind of based on like a famous guitar player. Or whatever, so No, it's not. So he's kind of just in disguise. It's a really good disguise. I, didn't, I wouldn't have guessed that if you gave me 10 guesses. Yeah, and good on Robert Downey Jr. to not have to just do play Iron Man. You know, it's like the, you forget that he's a really good actor. It's, he is a really good actor. These these Marvel movies, I get it. They sweep all these stars up, and then it seems like they're the only movies out after a while. I do kind of just I just like a movie. Everyone, I don't oh, really? need three and a half hours of I didn't Avatar know Eric too. Was it's in, a nice, cool in, thriller. Yeah. Hour and forty-five minutes around. Those are some big yeah. shoes to fill. So, was Eric Clapton Eric Clapton when he left the Yardbirds? Like yeah. talking to Steve or. Oh, yeah, Steve. Eric, uh, 
after this show and the break, take a look at what we wrote. To leave is that the only that need vinyl? Oh, yeah, yeah. loads. Yeah? Loads. You know, I need to come by and peep your uh, collection. Yeah, no, mine, is, big collection. mine is new. What, you, what would you say the general theme is? And literally everything, every genre. I even have the Spice Girls on vinyl. vinyl, vinyl I can't say it, on vinyl. And then I've got all Queen, got all Bon Jovi. Yeah. God, I've got Boston, one of my favorite albums. I made a rule that I don't get an album that I have on digital. Oh no, see, I, I definitely do because it never sounds it the sounds same. So different. It's so much better on vinyl. What's, your, so what's, your, what's your big get that you want? I wanted Amy Winehouse back in black. Ooh. They, they're always sold out, but I'm trying to track that down. You know what I, I got? I got Alanis Morissette, Little Dragon Pill. Ooh, I and like that's that album. such a good album. Ooh. Such a good album. I was wondering where he was. was I'm like, like, did he go into control room? I thought it was too. Oh. You little stinker up there, Rob. <laughs> All right. Welcome back. Pamela Anderson is taking control of her story in her own words in a new documentary called Pamela, A Love Story. Let's have a look. I had to make a career out of the pieces left, but I'm not the damsel in distress. I put myself in crazy situations oh! and <laughs> survived them. I don't care what people think, because it's the only choice I had. If I cared what people think, I wouldn't be here. So I'm guessing this is in response to Pamela and Tommy, right? So yep. she wanted to take some control. She, she was really sad when that came out. Like she, she was very unhappy. She hadn't authorized any of it. And I think we were all waiting for her to speak her piece. And I honestly think this is gonna be sensational. I love Pamela Anderson. I can't wait to watch. I knew that she didn't want that uh, documentary done with her and Tommy. I still watched it. Mm. Yeah, I did. I, I still watched it, and I have to say... You mean the movie that came out? The, the series, series that came out? Series. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. I still watched it, and I have to say, I thought she came off as the most sympathetic person. Mm -hmm. I did not realize that she had so little control, and also how she was victimized by this tape being put out there. She never profited from it. Nope. And then she was victimized again, which led to a miscarriage. Like, there were so many things that she was really the victim of. So although it was unauthorized, I think that this is a great way for people like me who didn't really know the story and really felt for her even through the storytelling of the unauthorized authorized documentary to get her side of the story because I feel like the momentum for her is just like full speed ahead. Yeah, and uh, Erica, I worry that people wa when they watch, you know, the Pam and Tommy or even watch this, w we have a tendency to watch it with 2022, uh, 2023 lenses. But what we have to re remember is at this time, this is pre-Instagram. So there's not a million starlets. There's her. She was everybody's dream girl. Mm -hmm. She was the big get. Everybody wanted to hear what she had to say and what she had on and what she looked like and what crazy thing that she was doing. And she was just almost uh, on the side of this machine that was just gonna, that just processes famous people. And she just got spit out on the other end. So I hope that there is some empathy for somebody in understanding what it meant to be as famous as she was back when the time where people were really famous. Now everybody's kind of famous. <laughs> I think our, our executive producer, Chris, he's, his kid has like a follower account that's got a ton of followers. <laughs> everybody's kind of famous well, now. He's famous. Back in the day, there was like yeah. 81 famous people and yeah. she was one of them. And it was a different, it was a different time yeah, yeah yeah and I think her having control like as opposed to the TV series which mm -hmm. she didn't have any part of mm -hmm. to this documentary and just her being without makeup and kind of telling her side of the story is already you're she inside she's her vulnerable. she's not putting on a show anymore right. yeah she's telling her story she's and I think, clearly being very vulnerable absolutely good absolutely. for her yeah coming up on DBL we talk with actress Rosie Perez what does she have to say about ageism in Hollywood Persimmon 
happens to groundhogs to woolly worms. There are numerous old wives tales that claim to predict the severity of winter, but there is one claim roaring loudly above the rest. Last Wednesday, severe weather hit the southeast and I posted about the big boom of thunder that clapped above our studio in the middle of a newscast. Immediately, several of you commented saying you had always heard thunder in winter means snow coming soon. Is it true? Let's verify our sources are meteorologist Christian Morgan, who consulted the National Weather Service and looked at weather records dating back years. Well, you know, there is a little bit of truth to the overall myth, but let's break it down. In fact, I took the numbers from 2016 through 2020 and all of those winters combined only had nine days with thunder and only one of those scenarios had a day with snow that followed it. So that's about 11%. That's not really good. So it really, really boils down to what happens in the upper atmosphere, the jet stream. We talk a lot about it. And when it searches to the north, we usually have more of a mild weather pattern, which is what we've been experiencing over the last couple weeks. And you have warm air, you have more moisture that the jet stream moves our way. It's easier for us to have rain systems, easier for us to have thunderstorms, but that doesn't always mean it's going to snow. So we can verify no thunder in winter does not guarantee snow within the next two weeks, but it can indicate an unstable atmosphere, making conditions favorable for winter precipitation. The National Weather Service emphasizes severe thunderstorms can occur any month of the year, though peak severe weather season is typically March, April and May. With your verify, I'm Megan Malaris. Welcome back to DBL. She's Brooklyn's finest Emmy and Oscar nominated actress who was in countless classics like White Men Can't Jump. Now she's laying down the law in season two of Your Honor. Check out our conversation with Rosie Perez. Yes, Rosie. Wow. Super excited, super happy. Rosie, thank you for being here. I want to get straight to your role because you're playing a federal prosecutor in Your Honor and you play a detective in Now and Then and you're a New Yorker, so let's be real. Do you feel like you're capable of solving a real crime? Because I feel like you are. <laughs> <laughs> I probably totally could solve a real crime. I'm, I'm addicted to uh, true crime. Um, so, uh, yeah, we watch it every single night. And, and my favorite film genre is film noir, so I'm good. <laughs> oh, have you been studying? There you go. Let's, All right. Let's not forget about Pineapple Express. Yes. You also play a cop. One of my favorites. Yeah. One of my favorites. <laughs> one of your many. But let's talk about Your Honor Season 2. I love that show. It's, it's, it's a heavy show. And you talked to Brian Cranston, and he asked you to join with this a day's notice. You, he asked you on Friday you had a film on Monday. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, yeah, I I first turned it down. I was like, there's no way that I'm gonna have enough time to prepare. And and uh, he kept emailing me, and at the end of each email was like, call me. <laughs> and um, um, we have a mutual friend, Ramon Rodriguez, and Ramon called me, and he said, you'd be a fool to turn this down. You know, just call the man. And then I finally did, and we, we spoke for like several hours, and what, one thing that he just kept reiterating is, I got your back. I'm not going to let you fail. You're a mm. pro. You could do this. That's why we asked you. We know that you could just jump right in. And he told me a time where he had to jump right in at a moment's notice and and that he never regretted it. And I was like, oh. And so, uh, yeah, and I was like, oh, gosh, I hate you. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> and so, <laughs> that was it. Did you Had you watched season one prior to talking to Brian? Yes, that was part of my hesitation because the caliber of acting on that show is astounding. I just wanted to bring my A game and I, you know, I usually prepare months for a role. So, yeah. I'm sure you did, Rosie. I'm sure you did. Yeah. <laughs> well, Rosie, you say the underbelly of your character in The Flight Attendant is aging insecurity. So how do you feel Hollywood has responded to you aging, especially knowing that you look the same as you did when we first met? <laughs> Wow. Okay. Well, maybe you should see me in the morning. Um, <laughs> I keep getting roles, you know, age appropriate roles. So, you know, I'm, I'm just going to go with it. And I think that it's really, really great, you know, and, it, and because there is ageism in Hollywood and stuff. So but they're they're coming to me and 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 I'm just saying thank you over and over again. 
you know, and, and um, I mean, I could do stuff, but I just was like, oh, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll wait. It's working for me now, this phase, so just stick with it. <laughs> yeah, they're coming to you because you're super dope. You didn't dream of being an actress. You actually had plans to major in biochemistry before you were discovered in your early 20s. Was the road as a Latina with a New York accent harder than you imagined? There are other actors out there that have New York accents and it was never an issue for them. They mm. were all from different kind of roles. So it's, it really, it's, it's, it's um, twofold. It's not just my accent, it's my ethnicity and yes. my nationality that was an issue, but they didn't want to say it. And so it was really difficult, you know? It was very difficult, but I just kept plugging away. Yeah, and speaking of plugging away, I, I don't know why I'm looking at you, Rosie, and I just picture you arguing with Woody in the bed and uh, White Man Can't Chop. <laughs> yeah. you, you do look exactly the same, but you've been in the business for three decades. How do you keep it real? Because you are that same girl, at least in my eyes, you have the same accent. You keep it real, Rosie. Um, you know, some roles I, I drop the accent, and it's it's crazy with social media. There's like, why is she talking like this? She doesn't talk like that, you know. And I'm going, I'm playing a role, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Acting. Um, but you know, it was it really comes from Raúl Julia because I remember meeting him, and I was flabbergasted and starstruck, of course. God rest his soul. And one of the main things that he told me, he says. Don't worry about the accent. I never did, and it worked for me. Just worried about the work. Worry about being good in the work. And and he says, so don't let them get to you. And I was like, wow, you know, that coming from an icon like Raul Julia, I, that always stuck with me. And plus, I'm just me, so I don't really care what people think. You know, mm -hmm. they're going to think what they're going to think, and I'm just going to keep working harder. How refreshing. Rosie, wow. thank you so much for joining us today. Catch season two of Your Honor premiering January 13th, only on Showtime. I can't wait. Rosie, again, thank you so much. Come back and see us. Thank you for having me. Thanks. We'll be right back. These are her sources. According to the CDC, canine influenza, also known as dog flu or canine flu, is, quote, a contagious respiratory disease in dogs caused by specific type A influenza viruses known to infect dogs. According to Dr. Christine Klippen, canine flu is more harmful to dogs than kennel cough, and she says we're still seeing new cases in Montgomery County. Symptoms are similar to the flu in humans, including cough, runny nose, fever, lethargy, eye discharge, and reduced appetite. Severity varies from dog to dog. For some, it's barely noticeable. and others, it can be fatal. If you notice your dog is struggling to breathe, lethargic, and not eating, take them to a vet. Those can be signs of pneumonia and serious infection. Otherwise, it's better to talk to your vet over the phone and keep your dog quarantined at home. Canine flu spreads through droplets when dogs cough, sneeze, or touch contaminated surfaces, and they're infectious for a while. Animals can still continue to shed the virus for 14 to 20 days after resolution of their cough. There is some good news, though. Vaccines are available. Two shots the first time, then a booster every year. Plus, there's no evidence that canine flu can spread from dogs to people, so you can still snuggle up with your furry friend risk-free. If you're still worried, the CDC says that while canine flu can be fatal, the percentage of dogs that die from the illness is very small. So be careful, but don't panic. With your Verify, I'm Rafael Sanchez Cruz. Are you skeptical of headlines and what you see on social media? We are too. The Verify newsletter helps you distinguish between true and false information by answering your questions. It provides fast facts on trending topics, spotlights major stories, and even includes a daily fun fact for all those trivia buffs out there. Get Verify's fast facts delivered every weekday to your email inbox. Go to verifythis.com slash email to check it out. The U.S. Postal Service processes more than 425 million pieces of mail a day, including some sent by Verify viewer Barbara. She texted our team to ask whether it'll cost more to send mail this year. So Barbara, let's verify. Are stamp prices going up in 2023? Our sources are the U.S. Postal Service and the Postal Regulatory Commission. The price of stamps is controlled by the Postal Regulatory Commission. Currently, it costs 60 cents to mail a standard one-ounce letter. In October, the Postal Service announced it wanted to raise the price to 63 cents and increase the cost of sending postcards and some international mail to help offset inflation. 
The request was approved by the commission in November and takes effect on January 22nd. So, yes, stamp prices are going up in 2023. This is the second increase in less than a year. Stamps went up two cents on July 10th, 2022. You could save some money by purchasing forever stamps before the increase on January 22nd. Forever stamps will always be enough postage to mail a one ounce letter, regardless of how much you paid to buy them. Just remember to buy your stamps from an official stamp seller. Offers of big discounts are usually a scam and you'll likely end up with counterfeit stamps. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Welcome back. We've got some great products from our friends at Morning Save. Check them out. All right, Steph, what do you have for us today? Hello, Tori. Hi, DBL Nation. I'm so excited to go shopping with you today. Yeah. And trust me, as ever, we've got some fabulous things for you to take a look at. So first up, we've got the August and Leo embroidered zigzag comforter set. Yeah. So this deal includes one comforter and two shams available in four colors. So normally this is $105, but we've got it for just $29.99, which is saving up to 71%. Our next product is the Luce Dermal Definer Facial Toner and Cleansing Brush. So this deal includes one facial toner and brush, one charging cable and one dust bag. And normally this is $89. Tori, we've got it today for $29.99. Yes! Which is saving 66%. Now this one is amazing. Today we have got the Life Pro Fitness Lumicure Light Therapy Torch Light. So this deal includes one light therapy torch, one carrying case, two rechargeable batteries, one battery charger, and super snazzy, one pair of protective goggles. No way! So normally it's $170, but we've got it for just $69.99, which is saving 59%. Now our last product today is the Odec Large Room True HEPA Air Purifier. So this deal includes one purifier with a five-stage system that cleans 99.97% of indoor pollutants. Normally it's $130. Those are pricey, yeah. But now it's $49.99. So that saves you guys 62%. Everybody head on over to MorningSave.com to snag these amazing deals at the lowest prices or you can even just scan that QR code right on screen. It's going to take you directly to these products on MorningSave's website. Could not be easier. Steph, thank you so, so much. So Steph, when you play turn on your Bluetooth at your house, does everything, including your socks, play music through? My socks? <laughs> because everything, everything, you sell everything on. is Bluetooth. <laughs> everything you have on there is Bluetooth accessible. No, you know what? Everything now is Bluetooth. It's right, but you know what I prefer more than the Bluetooth is all the facial stuff that like gets mm -hmm. all the lymphatic drainage out of your face, keeping you spelt. Deal blessed. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> I was like.